I'm Sarah Halpin and I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by former Everton women player Michelle Hinnigan. Michelle, thank you so much for joining us for this pre-match and you're doing commentary today, aren't you, on this game versus Durham as well? Yeah, no, thanks for having me. It's great to be back and I'm looking forward to the game today. Oh, it's great to see you back. You, of course, you know, winning a trophy with Everton against Arsenal them years ago, the 3-2 win. Is that your highlight of your career with Everton? Yeah, most definitely one of the highlights of my career. I think we all talk about it now in terms of the atmosphere, the memories that we've had and obviously the players were unbelievable as well and it's great to see obviously the likes of Tony back and Izzy Christensen back at Everton. Absolutely, well there'll, there'll be two girls and two players that you know really well and you know two, two players that really understand Everton and the identity of this club and you know taking us to that next chapter and trying to bring silverware back again. Yeah, it's brilliant to see the both girls back at Everton and you've got the likes of um, Grace Clinton coming through the ranks as well and hopefully we'll see her get some more minutes today. It's, it's always been a club for development and I think Everton shows that on the pitch in terms of the way we play, behind the scenes. It's, it's brilliant growing up and obviously it's great for all those younger girls getting involved with Everton as well. Absolutely. Well, you just mentioned her there, young Grace Clinton, just 18 years of age. She's been on absolute fire with the England unders as well, scoring goals in every single game. I think she's got back-to-back -back hat tricks or something like that. She scored against Manchester City in the Conti Cup. Do you fancy her to bag a goal today? Do you know what? Yeah, I really do. I think um, experience and everything. She's come on um, really, really leaps and bounds. I taught her when I was um, completing my teaching degree. I can't take any praise for that. I was only with her for six months, but I think <laughs> Some in, six terms, months. <laughs> and in terms of you, you can spot quality straight away. And I was able to see that in Grace when she was back in Broughton Hall. And it's amazing to see her to, uh, on the pitch, obviously, if she gets on today. But it's amazing to see her in the first team and getting minutes under the belt. Absolutely, and you just mentioned the pitch today. Like we were just walking across here, weren't you? And you commented on like how good the pitch is here. The facilities are fantastic, aren't they? Here at Walton Park. Yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, we used to play our county cup finals here, and it's it's changed now um, compared to back then. But it's like a carpet, the pitch, and you can see some of the girls are starting to play some good football on it as well, which is really good. And obviously. They've got the funding behind them at the minute, so it's a, it's like a carpet today, so I don't think there's any excuses. <laughs> I love that. You've heard it here, girls, now. Michelle's told you, no excuses today, because it is a beautiful surface. There's no doubt about that. Fantastic facilities. But in terms of today's opposition, Durham women, now they're a very tough, very physical, very well-disciplined team. How do Everton go about making sure we get the three points today? Yeah, Durham, I think they'll come with their game plan. Obviously, they're a strong team. We know that. I've played against a few girls back when I was playing as well, and they've got the experience the team I think it's about Everton now taking our football to them and showing them what we can do and I think over the past couple of games we've started to find the feet so hopefully they can hit the ground running after the international break. Let's hope so because it was a tight game last season when we played in the Conti Cup 2-1 winners that day do you think we'll be able to hopefully get a bit of a bigger score line than that today? Yeah hopefully I think if we like I said earlier if Everton take our game plan to them and play the football that we can I think it'll be a, a very good score line. Absolutely. Well, Michelle, thank you so much. I know you're doing the commentary today and we'll have plenty more from you later as well. But thank now you. let's throw it back to last season and the highlights from last time out against Durham Women. Yeah, she's always thinking ahead, you know, she can yeah. get all what the next pass is, you know, before it's even got there to her. There you go, right on cue, wins the ball. Alicia play. Lehman on the volley, onto the roof of the net, improvised shot by Alicia Lehman. That would have been a great goal, it was uh, a chance from nowhere. Yeah, great effort from Alicia there, I thought it might dip in, but just onto the roof of the net. Durham will also run the changes, Abby Holmes is on for the visitors. Oh, early chance in the opening seconds. The ball just wouldn't come out of Molly Sharp's feet, <laughs> thankfully. And the chance appears to have gone. Heppel, sharp again with the effort. And it's gone in. It's found the top left-hand corner. It's a wonderful finish by Molly Sharp. And would you believe it, inside the opening 30 seconds of the second period, Durham have taken the lead here at Walton Hall Park. And Everton is still in the dressing room. Yeah, they are. It's definitely not the start that Willie or the team would have wanted coming out into the second half, but an absolutely fantastic start from uh, Durham. You know, they were on the front foot, a little bit of a ricochet, and thought the chances might have gone at one point, but it's a fantastic finish into the top corner. Izzy Christensen. 
Good movement by Claire Emsley. Touches it to Jill Scott. Better from Everton. Moving the ball quickly. Moving the ball sweetly. Hayley Rasso wide to Meg Finnegan. Can she get the cross in? Yes, she can. Great cross. Fumbled by the goalkeeper and prodded into the empty net by Poppy Pattinson. And Everton are level. It's a disastrous moment for the Durham goalkeeper. But we won't worry too much about that because the Toffees are level within six minutes of falling behind. And Poppy Pattinson doesn't get many but she was in the right place at the right time to prop that one. And here's the replay, Dan. Yeah, much better play from us. You know, Claire found herself in some good spaces centrally and we've worked the ball out to Nico on the right-hand side and good delivery into the box. And, you know, Poppy's there at the right place at the right time to put the ball in the net. It's in the air. It's headed away. Finnegan kicked off the line. Would you believe it? It's a good clearance. But these corners from Claire Emsley are causing trouble now. Yeah, that was dangerous. Another header from Meg Finnegan, but I think it was Abby Holmes on the line does tremendously well to get that over the bar. Everton fashion one more opportunity. There'll be five minutes of added time. Jill Scott plays it to Claire Emsley. Emsley back to Scott again. Great ball by Scott. Hayley Rasso on the right-hand side. Everton pouring forward. Rasso's cross. Must be. And it's there! There's the goal from Sorensen! Everton lead by two goals to one in added time. It was another great ball into the danger zone. Nicole Sorensen was there. And Everton finally, hopefully, have put this cup tie to bed. Danielle Turner. Yeah, we finally made one of those deliveries pay. And you know, Nico getting in there at the back post, was, we say it's a massive part of our game that wingers have to be there at the back post. And there she is to to put the ball into the roof of the net but it was good play initially I think from Jill and Haley gets in on the right side and it's a good teasing ball. delivery and high into the roof of the yeah. net from Nico and that's a massive killer blow for Durham Claire Ramsey couldn't control it volleyed forward by Wilson Gabby George will make it hers good defensive header and there is the final whistle it took a while we left it late but we got there in the end, Danielle Turner. Yeah, we certainly made it difficult. I think, you know, uh, first half we had a lot of the ball, but weren't quite uh, creating much. And then, obviously, second start of the second half, Durham got a fantastic start going a goal ahead and managed to respond quickly. And, yeah, managed as well to, to, to get the winner in added time. It's finished at Walton Hall Park in the fourth round of the Women's FA Cup. Everton 2, Durham 1. So that's what happened the last time we faced Durham women. Let's hope that it's another three points today. I'm still joined by Michelle Hinnigan. And Michelle, the fans are starting to pile into Walton Hall Park now. Face painting going on, of course, Rainbow Laces campaign as well. How great is it to have fans back for the games? Obviously, last season they were very much missed, weren't they? Yeah, it's excellent. I think for the players as well, they need that atmosphere because the fans are there to do, for the 90 minutes. I think sometimes when things aren't going your way you listen to the crowds and you, you hear them all singing and it gives you a little bit of spirit to go and fight so it's amazing to see all the fans here I was here at the Man United game as well and the crowds were unbelievable I think I think the crowds actually got some own that goal in the end yeah definitely like you said it there we had some of the fans we had a drum on a few of the chants starting and people are just sort of finding their feet aren't they and really trying to make this a fortress and it does it it sort of you could see it spurred the team on in those last 15 minutes yeah it's amazing i think for families as well to bring the the children down they've got the face paints like you said there's obviously the, the van the, the burger van it's and making everything. me hungry and the, the atmosphere is unbelievable on a game day i think it's trying to replicate the men's game as well so it is great to get for them to do Brilliant, it's fantastic and we're really looking forward to this one. Michelle's just mentioned in there, Simone McGill and Lucy Graham, they're usually teammates, but here's what happened when they went head to head in Apple in a Bowl. Ty, Lucy. <laughs> Simone, Lucy, in front of you are two bowls, one apple, and there's only one winner. <laughs> Whoever decides to leave with the apple on their side of the table will be crowned champion. You taste it I can smell it. <laughs> to decide who gets to have a look at their side of the bowl, a classic game of rock, paper, scissors. Yes. 
Simone, you can now look in your bowl. Lucy, you have to turn away. Just uh, for the camera, Simone, can you reveal what's in your bowl? Lucy, you can now turn around. Simone, you have to convince Lucy to either swap the bowl or decide to keep the bowl on your side of the table. Let the discussion begin. Well, I want to keep my bowl. <laughs> it's in there, right? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Well, what if I want it? Well, then you're going to have to... But after what? No, I don't know. <laughs> You get to choose, don't you? Maybe, I, no, I I it, maybe it's in yours. Maybe it's in yours. Maybe I want yours. <laughs> this makes no sense. No, I know. <laughs> so wait, so one minute you said it's in yours, and then it's in mine. That's what I mean, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. <laughs> nah, you've got history, Eliza. <laughs> I couldn't trust you as far as I could throw you, as I. <laughs> Do you get a good look at it, aye? Aye. So it is in yours then? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But I thought you just said you had a good look at it, so... Nah, uh, before. Last game. <laughs> last game? This is the first game. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you going to do, Luce? You've, what been you gonna here, do? you've been in here early doors planting, planting apple, planting seeds. You're on to the core. <laughs> <laughs> Get one, <laughs> <laughs> uh, What are you thinking? What are you going to do? Well, I want to win, and you only win if you get the apple. And which one's the apple in? Yeah, I think I want to swap, you know. Nah, I don't think you want to do that. Yeah, I think I do. Nah, I, I you said you had a good look at it, so I think it's in yours. Can I you, go for a swap? Can are I you swap? sure? Are you sure you want to swap? I'm positive. Nah, you don't want to swap. I do. Yeah, you do. Look at you backtracking now. <laughs> Look at you backtracking. <laughs> oh, these lies. These lies are just coming back to you. Guy, <laughs> can I swap? No. Final answer. Swap. Swap. Nah, she doesn't want to do that. Can I lift it? No. Swap across Lift's, the table, please. Swap you should not let touch it. Oh. Simone, can you move the bowl to the other side of the table and move Lucy's bowl towards you? Yep. So well, can I have you to move <laughs> your, mo your bowl to Lucy's side of the table and move Lucy's bowl to your side of the table, please? So, oh, it's not, like, I'm confused now. Did I get to lift the bowl? Yeah. So well, can I have you to move <laughs> Lucy's bowl to your side of the table and move your bowl to Lucy's side of the table, please? On the counter. <laughs> I can't touch these balls. I want this one. <laughs> this isn't a loop, but Simone, can I have you move your balls to Lucy's side of the table and move Lucy's ball to your side of the table? Oh, that's. Do you know what? I'm actually I... lost now. <laughs> yeah, I'm... you've actually really confused me. Now I don't know what balls what, but I... I'm thinking it's in this one. I can smell the. The gala. I think it's like a gala apple, maybe. Well, you, don't you don't even know that. Have you seen it? <laughs> on the count Am of three. I to open it? On the count of three, with both hands on the balls, you will reveal what the contents of the ball on your respected side of the table. I hate this. And who will be crowned champion? <laughs> no. Of apple and a ball. You <laughs> smell victory in the form of a three, two. One. Are you gonna lift your bowl or? <laughs> <laughs> We're doing that again. No, you better. No, we want to do it again. We're doing it again. No, get another apple. <laughs> no. Get another apple. <laughs> I played it all wrong. I know what I need to do next time. <laughs> I know what I need to do. <laughs> I know what I need to do.
Welcome back to the show and I am delighted to be joined by Pete McFarlane from the Everton Women Official Supporters Club. Pete, thanks so much for joining us. Are you looking forward to this one today? I am indeed, yeah. It's, it's been a couple of weeks now with the international break. Uh, it's, it's great to be back at Walton Old Park. Um, I'm really looking forward to the, the game today. It's, it's, I'm delighted to see the, um, the team as well. It's great to see some of the girls who, who have lacked a bit of game time over, over this season. It's great to see Simone McGill back in the starting eleven. It's great to see Poppy Pattinson and, of course, Grace Clinton as well, um, a player who I'm, who I'm delighted to see playing today. Um, such, a, such a fantastic young talent. Um, and, yeah, really looking forward to it. Grace Clinton, she really is a special talent and of course she's one of our own as well. It is extra special, isn't it, as well for the fans watching and just to mention the supporters as well, I think against Manchester United we had this place rocking. I think you were largely to do with that, you and the supporters club, beating the drum, getting the chance going. Can we expect more of that from yourself and the rest today and for the upcoming games? Absolutely, yeah. I've been, I've been working hard on my drumming technique over the last <laughs> few weeks of uh, you know, doing a few weights uh, to make sure I can keep it up for the whole game. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, it, it was a really good atmosphere against Manchester United and, and certainly with their fans as well they travel really well the Man United fans so Thank it was you. important for us to get behind the girls um, and it's something that we're, we're really looking to, to keep up for the rest of the season and beyond um, I think it's massively important that the Evertonians get behind get behind the team and, and show what we're all about um, we all know Evertonians are great at, at bringing a good atmosphere um, so yeah hopefully we can we can keep it up absolutely and three games of course to look forward to we've got today's game we've got West Ham and then Manchester United again in the Conti Cup so plenty of opportunity to get here and really start trying to make this place a fortress and a tough place for teams to come absolutely and I, I think when you look at the, when you look at the stadium as well um, it is so tight to the, to the pitch and it, it, it's 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 quite difficult sort of just to get the atmosphere started when you go to a new home because it, you know you don't have the traditions you don't have like that sort of thing but I, th I feel like now we've sort of turned the corner with it and um, when the fans start coming every week and they start to get involved with that atmosphere pick up the chance yeah that's it pick up the chance it just becomes second nature and people want to get involved with it so I think that, that you know the next three games will hopefully show um, that we can we can get a good atmosphere going here that's what we want but best fans in the world obviously that goes with Without saying so yeah I'm sure the place will be absolutely rocking now Durham today's game can I get a, a score prediction from you well I don't want to be disrespectful to Durham but I'm, I'm expecting a, a, a very a very good victory uh, today for Everton um, I'm hoping we can we can get the goal difference up a bit after after obviously uh, a disappointing results against Ma Manchester City earlier on in the competition um, I am hoping for a 4 or 5 nil victory oh I like that I like that Pete you can come on again the optimism <laughs> the, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of that uh, Pete McFarlane everyone thank you so much for joining us I you. hope you enjoy the game get that drum banging now <laughs> up the toffees <laughs> up the toffees brilliant stuff and here's how we got on in our last Conti Cup fixture against Leicester. Turner. Trying to wriggle through and create something early on here. And he's down the line. It's opened up really nicely here. Deflected shot and in! Everton lead in just the second minute. That's look easy from the commentary box, but need to try and get a foothold in this game, and that's not going to help. Well intercepted by Dali, who's got it back. Dali has a go. Straight at Lambourne. Nice pass forward from Bjorn, finds Christensen. Likes to get in between those lines of defence and midfield. And chasing a second, they'd be deserving of it. Set back for Dali to shoot, blocked. And now back in and in. Oh, what a goal that is! 2 0 Everton. Everton, of course, be hunting more goals. Kenny Rufus, top level team, and certainly what they want to become under Jean Luc Vasseur as they chase a spot in the top three for now. They're chasing a third goal. Dali's through. Bag stayed down and has blasted it over. That was a good chance. And she knows it, the French international. Good. Given away by George. Broom helps it on. Suddenly, might be a chance for Leicester. Sigsworth brought down. That could be a card for Nathalie Bjorn. We think the angle favours a left footer. And it is going to be the left footer. Perfield and almost goes in. And in on the rebound. 
ground. Leicester City are back in it. But it came back kindly for Ashley Plumtree to put it in. Christensen to take it. And Goldwoods. Still there. Christensen to cross again. Pretty decent one and headed in. Everton regain their two goal lead. And they'll hope that will be that. Come Everton chasing a fourth. Fourth would seem quite harsh on Leicester City. They've nearly got it. Fantastic stuff there. 3-1 victory against Leicester last time out in the Conti Cup. And here's what Izzy Christensen had to say ahead of this one. Izzy Christensen, thank you so much for joining me ahead of this one today. Conti Cup versus Durham. It's a good game to get yourselves ready for the upcoming home fixtures as well, isn't it, today? Yeah, definitely. We've got a run of three games now at home. So we want to make sure we, we get that off to a good start by playing against Durham here today. And obviously, we just want to have one thing in our mind, which is three points. Well, in the last time out in the Conti Cup, we won 3-1 against Leicester. It was Jean-Luc's first game. We played some lovely stuff that day. Are we looking to replicate that same kind of performance today against Durham? Yeah, without a doubt. I think we need to play with similar sort of intensity as that game we played against Leicester a few weeks ago. Um, we need to make sure that we set ourselves up on a good, a good foot for the next one of games we've got. Make sure we play to our standards. Um, it's going to be a tough game. I predict I'll probably pack the bus a little bit. So it's about being aware and moving the ball quickly and hopefully we can get like you just said then it's going to be a tough game we know Durham are a very very well disciplined side a very physical side a, a team that's doing well in the division below us so they'll really want to lay a glove on Everton today won't they have a point to prove absolutely yeah I mean when the team playing in a division below um, they're always going to want to prove a point they're always going to want to upset uh, that team and that, that for us it's all about us and how we perform it's not really anything to do with them it's about us maintaining our standards uh, remaining very professional throughout from the minute one to the last minute and ensuring that we do our jobs properly and, and stay focused on the task, I'm sure we'll be fine. Definitely. Well, it was a close game last time we played them last season. 2-1, we were winners in the end. Hoping maybe to make it a little bit more comfortable than that today. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Listen, like, it's important that we play well, we move the ball well, and as a product of that, we should score goals as well. So we've got to get the defensive work right first, the structure, make sure we're secure behind the ball. And then, obviously, we can let our attacking players do, do what they do best. So... For us, it's about, like I said, remaining focused and, yeah, hopefully we can hit the ball in the back of the net a few times today. Brilliant. Well, good luck for today, Izzy. Thank you so much for joining us Thank and you. let's have a good game. Thank you. Yeah, a very warm welcome from Walton Hall Park, home of Everton women. And this afternoon, playing host to Durham in this Continental Cup fixture, the group stages of this competition. Everton's third group game and having beaten Leicester and lost to Manchester City Everton know this is a fixture they need to win if they're to retain aspirations of progressing from this five team group Durham have already played three group games but first of all without further ado let us take you through the Everton lineup this afternoon Courtney Brosnan gets the nodding goal a back four we expect a lineup of uh, Pattinson Finnegan, George and Meyer and a midfield three of Christensen, Benison and Clinton and leading the line Simone McGill partnered by Tony Duggan and Ayora Gali. A very interesting lineup and uh, none, we do not have Jean-Luc Vasseur here. More on that a little bit later on but first of all Durham have named a fairly strong 11 with the exception maybe of goalkeeper Brooke McCain, who's making her first appearance of the season. We expect them to line up with a back four of Hill, Ale, Holmes and Bradley, and a midfield four of uh, Robson, Heppel, Brown and Crossweight, with Lambert just behind striker Bridget Galloway. Here come the two teams. Let's say... A big warm welcome to former Everton captain Michelle Hinnigan, who's alongside me for full commentary. A very cold Michelle Hinnigan, but this game will surely warm us up, Michelle. Yeah, it is very, very cold here up in the gantry at Walton Hall Park. 
but I'm looking forward to see Everton hit the ground running after the international break and hopefully get a couple of goals this game. Well, some of those players who were away on international duty certainly caught the eye. Everton, of course, in the uh, familiar colours today. Durham in the all-red strip. And uh, Durham, of course, realistically, having played the three group games, you know, yet to win uh, and currently prop up the Group B table. They know they can't make the quarter-final stage. So championship opposition for Everton today. And again, Michelle, that they will feel confident of getting a result out of. Yeah, most definitely. I think the players will have been working on it this week, obviously. They know they need the points in this in this league table in terms of the Conti Cup. So I'm looking forward to see what the girls bring out today. Yes, indeed. The conditions will probably play a uh, part. The pitch, though, does look in fine condition, doesn't it, Michelle? It's uh, it's very flat. The playing surface looks excellent. Yeah, it, it is. It's really it's like a carpet. Um, obviously, the sprinklers have just been on two minutes ago before kickoff. Um, it's considering what we used to play on. I think it's come on leaps and bounds, and it, it, it'll improve as the years go on. But hopefully, the girls can get the ball down and play on it. Everton captain Izzy Christiansen is uh, ready for this one, as you heard before kickoff. And some of these Everton players, as I mentioned, in fine form in terms of international duty in the week. Let's have a look at uh, Simone McGill, who certainly delivered the goods for Northern Ireland, scoring four goals for her country in an 11 0 massacre of North Macedonia. So, uh, her confidence will be soaring, won't it, Michelle? Yeah, definitely. And just before international break, she scored against United as well here at Walton Hall Sports Centre. So I think she's high in confidence at the minute and hopefully she can get a couple more today to add to a tally. And it's time, of course, that uh, Tony Duggan delivered. Surely, surely it has to happen soon. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> she's doing everything else other than scoring at the minute. So I think for her own confidence, it'll be amazing to see her score today. Yeah, we would love to see that, as would the uh, crowd inside Walton Hall Park today. Uh, we were hoping maybe for a better turnout, but uh, people do arrive late as well. They leave it right until the very last minute, so maybe a few more will get in this stadium before we get underway. Our referee this afternoon is Louise Sanders, in charge of matters out there. Hopefully, we don't have to talk about her too much. Right, we are just about set here this afternoon. The first of three successive home matches for Everton. Two of them in this competition. And of course, a real opportunity as the players take the knee before we get underway. A real opportunity for Everton to press their claims for a quarter-final spot. And on the back of their last outing, that 1-0 league win at Leicester a fortnight ago, as Michelle says, confidence will be high coming into this one. So we're underway. Full coverage here from myself, Alan Irwin, and Michelle Hinnigan alongside me for full commentary. Everton in possession with Finnegan getting the ball up towards the halfway line. Dunham immediately wanting to get the challenges in thick and fast and get a, an early feel of the ball. And back it goes to Robson to steer it back to goalkeeper Brooke McCain, it's a big day for her, I have to say, having not appeared this season. Is that a bit, bit of a gamble by uh, Lee Sanders, the uh, coach of Durham? Yeah, I think the, the players will have studied that earlier on. And obviously, as you've just seen from kickoff, you can see the pressure straight away from the Everton women girls. So it's, it's great to see. Um, I think they need to obviously keep that pressure on at the minute because they're looking a little bit under the cosh, Durham. The ball played to Ale on that right-hand side before it drifts out of play for the... Everton throw seen out by Pattinson, who has started at uh, left back with uh, Leone Meyer at right back today. We were contemplating the exact formation before we got underway, but uh, it will all unfold as the game ticks by, and we're just over a minute into it. Very early days as Durham push forward down the right hand side, but no problems for Pattinson to uh, see that ball out behind for the goal kick. Everton. Of course, I've had that little break, but two games in this Continental Cup already, a 5-1 drubbing at the hands of Manchester City, but a good 3-1 victory at Leicester, which uh, certainly sets them up here to hopefully go on and get the 
three points. There is another group game taking place already, Manchester United against Leicester, which got underway at 12 o'clock, and it's a, a result of, which I suppose we'll have a keen eye on, Michelle, as well. Yeah, definitely. I think the girls will be looking at that result at the end of it. Um, they need to, to make sure that they get a win today to get off that leaderboard and hopefully qualify. It's Gabby George at the back. And just again using Pattinson on that left-hand side. And back with goalkeeper Courtney Brosman who has played in one of these Continental Cup fixtures. It was that 5-1 game where Everton were beaten heavily at uh, Manchester City. Probably not one that she wants to recall, actually. But let's hope it's a clean sheet today, as Benison has possession and played to Meyer on this right-hand side, looking to release Garley. Garley towards the corner flag, but losing possession. And Durham away with it with Ale and played back inside and across by uh, Robson you may know a few of these Durham players from your your own days Michelle some of them are, are still still around yeah some of the starting lineup I used to play against as well so the experience in this team today will do them the world of good obviously there's some quality players and I can imagine that they've been planning all week to obviously stop the Everton ladies getting past them yeah Sarah Robson is a, a veteran midfielder now at the age of 34, the Northern Irish midfielder, and she'll be the one who tries to uh, keep Durham very much in the matters and will try to control midfield as well, I would imagine. And as it stands, Everton have enjoyed more of the uh, early possession and ball played by Pattinson for that left-hand side to release McGill. Simone McGill can't get on the end of it, but Everton will settle for the throw-in. Approaching the four-minute mark here at Walton Hall Park. Everton nil, Durham nil. Are we going to go long into the penalty area? Yes, is the answer towards McGill. Who gets the flick on, and unfortunately, Tony Duggan couldn't do too much with it. No, but it was good play there. We're keeping them nice and high up in the field for the first five minutes, so it's good to see. The ball cleared by... McCain, the goalkeeper, and some distance on it, th right through to the opposite number. I think the wind <laughs> took some of that as well. <laughs> I think the wind is uh, blowing as we look from uh, right to left. I think that's fairly categoric. Gabby George for Everton to again see what's ahead of her, but using Patterson to go back to goalkeeper Brosnan once more towards McGill who can't bring it down under control and picked up by Durham once more and back with Holmes at the back early days but uh, Everton looking okay in the opening exchanges as Christensen has it in midfield now for the Blues played out down that left hand side for uh, Benison Christensen once more holding off the challenge of Galloway bringing in George again a few passes going astray and Durham have the throw in on the far side Throwing on the right-hand side for Durham. Six minutes into this one, still goalless, and we wait the first real opportunity of the game as Galloway gets the flick on for Durham. We've got an opportunity to break here. Galloway's received the return ball and goes for goal, and that is the first save of the game, produced by uh, Courtney Brosnan. It was straightforward enough, but that was uh, decent football from Durham on the counter-attack. Yeah, that was a great ball through the middle there to set up the strike and a great strike it was just went to the goalie's uh, left hand side out for the corner yeah I think Bridget Galloway caught it quite well having taken the return pass from uh, Heppel and I think Brosnan would have expected to deal with it as she did and now Everton must defend this Durham corner first of the game drilled in near post and headed away by Meyer 
back in it comes and the keeper does really well to pluck that out of the air because she was under pressure there as well Brosnan but uh, that will do a confidence to power a good yeah definitely um, she was under pressure then as well we've got the wind against them this half so it's a great catch from the keeper hopefully that le leads her with a little bit of confidence going into the game now yeah a decent save and a decent take from the corner as well and Everton coming forward with Pattinson's ball in towards uh, Clinton he doesn't get the free kick possession lost but Everton immediately have it back and now Galloway is down injured in that challenge with uh, Finnegan and it is a free kick well it's not a free kick actually I don't think the referee blew the referee just uh, bringing play to a halt we have a couple of players who need attention let's just have a look at the chance that came Durham's way with Heppel's ball back into the path of Galloway it was a good strike as you say Michelle and a straightforward enough save yeah she had the left hand side covered there uh, great hands and then off for a corner kick and came off with the corner and dealt with that really really well Bridget Galloway the 22 year old striker is down injured at the moment former uh, Sunderland striker has uh, just the one goal to a name this season which did come in one of the championship fixtures for Durham thankfully she's back on her feet and able to continue her part in this game hopefully five substitutes named by both managers I did mention earlier that Jean-Luc Vasseur is not here today with some uh, illness issues and uh, of course Covid has been uh, very much on everyone's lips for the last couple of years and unfortunately it's a situation today that has meant that uh, Everton's manager Jean-Luc Vasseur is not here so Frederick Picone is in charge today the first team coach assistant manager we can call him that can't we? yeah here's Pattinson for Everton George Christensen that's a good ball out wide but unfortunately the control didn't match the pass from uh, Garley who miscontrolled and Durham have the throw in no, she'll be disappointed with that, the ball just running underneath her foot. George. Now Pattinson again. Was delaying too long there, Finnegan, and was closed down on the halfway line. And then the ball over the top from Isle is comfortable enough for Everton and goalkeeper Courtney Brosnan Christensen looking for a bit of movement and plays it wide right for Maya decent ball forward as well to be picked up by Tony Duggan but immediately pressured and Everton have the throw in on this near side as we look Everton kicking from left to right in the first half here here's Benison with the ball inside sorry it was Clinton with the ball inside looking for Simone McGill but Everton tidy up again at the back with Gabby George in command of that situation once more in far side for the visitors we're doing okay in the championship this season in uh, fourth place on 18 points having played 10 fixtures they won six of them lost four did finish as uh, runners up last season Galloway trying to get on the end of that but again George in charge at the back for Everton commanding display so far from her yeah I think the game will show as the game goes on today Gabby's experience will come into it in terms of her defensive ways that she plays and obviously she's here to help out the team and do a good defensive job yeah England international defender actually played with the under 23s last week and scored for the under 23s Not as many as Simone McGill did for uh, Northern Ireland yeah Gabby's got that in a game as well she can score goals obviously from set plays as well getting up into the box 
So it'll be uh, exciting to see if she gets it up into the box today. Let's hope so. If Everton do get some uh, set pieces and she could be up there for uh, delivery and hopefully can deliver the goods for Everton. Still goalless, 12 minutes in. This Continental Cup third game of the group for Everton. They've got Manchester United to come a week on Wednesday, the 15th of December. We'll be here for that too to bring you full coverage of that fixture. Everton, of course, came up against Manchester United in the league not too long ago. It was a decent result as well, 1-1 one, one draw. Yeah, it was a, a very good game um, and gave Everton the confidence that they needed after a couple of defeats on the bounce. So it was good to see Simone get on the score sheet there. Um, and hopefully they'll bring the confidence into today's game from, from those wins. Here's Tony Duggan. That's a good ball out wide for Meyer if she can get there and does. And that is an Everton corner. And a chance now for Gabby George to get forward from the back. Along with Finnegan. Megan Finnegan making her way into the penalty area with Gabby George. Everton's first corner of the game, 13 minutes in. And a chance to test this Durham defence now. Plenty of instructions from the touchline from both coaches as the ball is sent high into the 18-yard box. Met by Durham defensively, but it'll be sent back by Christensen wide to that left-hand side for Clinton now it can come back into the penalty area and the keeper comes to make that connection and has been awarded a free kick as the ball fell loose from her grasp but McCain does get the free kick yeah I think it was a foul there from Meg Finnegan just colliding with the keeper just before the ball comes in yeah you can see earlier ball played back by Clinton for the delivery into the penalty area which was decent and then the challenge yeah we'll give her that one free kick Finnegan's challenge was I suppose one that she had to make going for the ball Durham in possession happy to get it back to uh, Hill to clear to the halfway line Everton Venison got the ball inside and forward it goes towards Everton again but just unable to hold it up front at the moment and Christensen winning it back in midfield now can Everton create something from here ball touched away by Isle once more again back with Everton and unable to make progress to the penalty area again. No, I think Durham's back line are doing really, really well there. In terms of Durham, they've always been known as a defensive team anyway, and really strong, and you can see the two centre-halves are very tall and physical. Yeah, prepared to put themselves about as Patterson goes on the overlap, and unfortunately doesn't get the corner. There was a double ricochet there, which meant it came back off Bobby Patterson and behind for the goal kick, unfortunately. But that's what we want to see more of, really. The fullbacks getting forward when they can, getting on the overlap and hopefully getting an opportunity to deliver into the penalty area to feed the likes of Duggan and McGill inside the 18 yard box. Everton nil, Durham nil. And we've played just over a quarter of an hour here at Walton Hall Park. A very cold and breezy Walton Hall Park on this Sunday afternoon. stops play for a head injury by the looks of it and all okay no problem in the end for Grace Clinton She's playing in that midfield role really probably the one furthest forward would you would you say Michelle yeah she lo looks like she's playing in the 10 role I think by the looks of it the way Simone and Tony have set up it's they've got a front two 
Um, Grace is just playing in behind them. It'll be nice to see Grace going on the ball a little bit more right now. Yeah. Another great ball in from Izzy. I think Izzy can see straight away. She's been playing the balls out wide, and that's where obviously the areas are to get at Dunham. So Everton have this throw in, which Maya can take. The German defender who was signed in the summer from Arsenal. She's already got herself on the score sheet in the league this season. It's not her main objective though, being a, a defender operating from right back today. And taking this throw in for Everton here. Just about 10 yards or so from the corner flag, maybe a touch more. Good work by uh, Clinton who can't wriggle our way into the penalty area in the end. But Everton come again with a, another throw from Maya. Here is Clinton. Not quite the pass that she was looking for. And thumped away by Durham again. For an Everton throw inside their own territory. Maya skips back down the line to... Uh, probably take just trying to get some distance on it the ball did stay in play before Maya sends it forward for Duggan to chase uh, McGill to chase I should say Duggan's there as well and that will be a free kick for Durham That was good by play by Sarah there. You can see she's drove out from the back and engaged the two attackers in to, to get a foul for the team. You can see every time one of the Everton players get on the ball, they've got two Durham players around them. So you can see defensively the way that Durham have set up today. Free kick taken by Robson. Towards the edge of the Everton penalty here again. Well met. And Everton untroubled by the Durham front line there. Pattinson for Everton, finding Benison. Finnegan. Christensen. That's better from Everton, that's good football. Here's Garley. Can we get quality into the penalty area? It's defended well by Hill. Garley prepared to chase and try and pick up again, but worked away towards the halfway line. Christensen instructions from the touchline to keep it you can hear the coach on the side keep the ball but he's, he's right every time he's, he's gone on the ball there she's found the space it was nice to see Tony come and play in the pockets there and then which made me then go on the overlap the ball worked back to goalkeeper Rosnan but Everton keeping the ball better in the last few minutes under instructions from the touchline as Patterson gets the ball forward for Clinton to play into the penalty just a little bit too much on it there for Duggan who was chasing it down but the favourite to take was always the goalkeeper yeah there was great vision from Grace Clinton there just a little bit too much uh, weight on the ball playing it through to Tony yeah better from Everton in terms of possession 20 minutes in still goalless and here comes the punt from goalkeeper McCain again who is getting distance on it with the help of the I was going to say breeze but it's a wind more than a breeze and back with Everton keeper Brosnan happy to use her feet and Everton play their way out of their own penalty area and that's good to see some good touches there from the goalkeeper especially under pressure by one of the strikers there some good play here's Brown back with uh, Ale again, Grace Air, I should say, I'm calling her Ale, Grace Air, I should say, doing her a disservice. That's the scouse version. <laughs> I think some of us may have been on the Ale on a Saturday night, but uh, not before a big game. Everton looking to hit Durham now on the uh, break forward, but unfortunately, Garley's ball was blocked. Now it finds its way through to a, an offside McGill. 
just offside. I think if you can see that if Grace would have played it slightly earlier. I think she would have kept a line. Yeah, Simone McGill just uh, straight slightly off. Here's Grace there down the Durham left. She's actually seen a lot of the ball in the first half, but now Everton have it with Duggan. First time ball played forward for McGill, which was laid off and unable to be collected by Clinton. Here's Catherine Hill at the back for Durham. Durham's three group games saw them draw 2-2 against Manchester United, but of course a penalty shootout and shoes at the end of these Continental Cup games. When it's a, a draw, they lost it 5-3 in the shootout. They lost 3-0 to Manchester City away from home and lost at home to Leicester last time out on the 17th of November, 2-1. So they uh, prop up the table with just a point. Although, I think when the group draw was made, they knew they were in a difficult group. Yeah, definitely. But if you look the way they've set up today, they're, they've come out like they mean business. They haven't let the players touch the ball. They've got tight to the players every time. And Everton players on the ball, you can see here, there's three girls around the ball. Yeah, they've made life difficult for the Blues. So we're still looking for a, a clear cut opening in front of goal really to test Brooke McCain between the posts today for Durham yes. Christensen's ball forward to Tony Duggan that's good control back with Izzy Christensen switch to the left for Pattinson in the middle they're trying to get Izzy Christensen on the ball as much as possible you can hear the instructions from the coach as well because every time she's had it so far she's looking to switch the play or play that ball in yeah I think that's the uh, directive from the touchline to get Izzy Christensen on the ball and try and retain possession as best Everton possibly can ball forward to Galloway not quite the control she intended and George can clear picked up again by the red jerseys of Durham played out to Grace Air on this left hand side poor touch and Everton steal possession Tony Duggan gets it inside for Clinton looking for support from Benison but the pass not quite perfect allowing the challenge from Catherine Hill yeah the ball was just slightly in behind um, good, good cover in there from the centre half as well getting over I think that's what you'll see all game as well once the ball gets past the midfield you'll see the centre halves and, the, and the, the full backs getting back in to help out yeah so we're beyond the first quarter of the game here and still goalless oh, the flag did go up eventually on the far side for a Durham throw in front of the Everton fans on that far side as we look towards Galloway but bouncing over her head and away by Finnegan Hill's ball switched for Grace Air down this Dunham left again the ball into the penalty area but Gabby George was there to away collected by Lambert out wide right again and Patterson's got to do her job here and did it quite effectively although the ball is back with Durham before Everton do get away with Clinton here's Hill for Durham down that right hand side again more work for Pattinson this time the ball's to the right edge of the penalty area and into the 18 yard box as well for the shot across goal which is well dealt with by Brosnan who makes a very decent save which results in the Durham corner yeah the keeper's done really 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 well to push that to the left hand side of a goal it looked from the hand from here it went in yeah I feared for a moment but Holmes did well to wriggle away into the penalty area and find that room to get the shot away 
but that is a good save and this will be a, an even better angle for us as the save made by uh, Courtney Brosnan very well done indeed now she's got to deal with a corner and does that effectively as well it's a great save again excellent excellent flick on there by the keeper I think that the past couple of saves she's done will give her plenty of confidence now moving into the game yeah, Sandy McIver on the bench will be applauding those. Everton's uh, number one. Rejoined the club in uh, January of last year from Manchester City, of course. Corner once more for Durham. And again, it's swung deep and not back. And this is problematic for Everton, but they got rather fortuitous there as the ball deflected into the air and was just plucked out by uh, Brosnan. And Everton survive. Yeah, she's done well there, Courtney Brosnan, to save that. I think it came off her own player. And she's been able to pick it out and just release the pressure from the team. Yeah, Everton having to defend a series of corners there from Durham, which in the end they've managed to survive and keep the scoreline blank. And Courtney Brosnan here made another decent grab to make sure that Everton weren't in danger inside their own six-yard box in the end. Everton nil, Durham nil still. Approaching half an hour. I have to say that Durham have had the better of the opportunities in the half hour, despite the fact that Everton have had probably more of the ball. Still looking to create are the Blues. Christensen's ball in and she receives it back it's just about kept in play by Maya but only at the expense of uh, a foul on Grace Eyre who couldn't continue so the referee blows for the free kick yeah you could see a sloppy pass from Maisie there you can see her shaking her head there knowing that it wasn't good enough um, and that's allowed the, the left back to get, to get in and get a free kick yeah, she'll be disappointed with that well there uh, is he Christensen So Robson to take this free kick for Durham. So Robson, the experienced campaigner. Just confirmation that uh, Maya was booked for that challenge. That doesn't surprise me, actually. No, I think you know, it's one of them ones that you'd have to, you know, sort of have to make that foul, otherwise putting them under the pressure there. Obviously, she's out of the game. There's only two left, and there was two two of the Durham players up top. Yeah, well, she was progressing into acres of space, so it was probably one of those uh, very good tactical fouls, I think. We call it that. Yeah, take one for the team. Indeed. Clinton can't keep it, but was fouled in the process. Free kick, Everton. see that play again as soon as one of the, the centre, central midfield players get on the ball they've got at least two of the Durham attackers up against them not letting them get past yeah they've closed down well haven't they and George with the free kick for Finnegan the only mayor with the ball forward taken by McGill Finnegan again the switch of play is decent Benison's ball into the penalty area couldn't quite find uh, Clinton or McGill Duganua furthest forward for Everton looking for goals McGill took that well and uses Meyer back by Durham by Crossweight doing well down that right hand side and Gabby George sorts it out no nonsense at all and strides away with the ball at her feet and makes real inroads into the Durham half 
Yeah, that was really, really good play by Cross Nate again down the right hand side. Obviously, you've seen Gabby George there, it may be a little bit of frustration going forward. Kept on the ball and drove out from the back. Trying to lead by example from the back, I think, and uh, did well. Robson. Uh, did get there, but only push it forward through to Everton goalkeeper Courtney Brosnan. Just on Brosnan, she did start both games for the Republic of Ireland against Slovakia and Georgia in the uh, internationals recently, so we should have expected her to be in fine form, shouldn't we? And she yeah, is. definitely, and she has proven that today, the, the first 20, 25 minutes in, she's had a couple of great saves. Um, that can only do a confidence. Yeah, might have a bit more to do here as Durham get another ball into the penalty area, which is flicked away, and eventually Everton can come clear in possession before Robson intervenes and picked up by Garley for Everton. Finnegan, Christensen. That's into no man's land. Again, that was great play from um, the Durham centre half there, Rosson. She's came all the way with Simone, thinking that Simone was going to take a touch around her. She's just delayed it and then stuck her foot in to, to gain possession. So we should give them credit, Durham, at the moment, who are restricting Everton to very, very few opportunities in the final third. And Everton will look to create now. Yeah, I'd like to see, obviously, Simone. Grace Clinton and Tony get on the ball in the pocket a little bit more. As you can see, the Durham defenders going with them all away. So if one of them pulls them out. Yeah. Pattinson's ball into the penalty area. And Maya goes down under challenge, but I don't think uh, anything's forthcoming from that. No, I think she went down too easy there. Point right. And uh, Everton in possession with Duggan flicking it forward towards Maya. But Robson's there for Durham at the back. And manages to find Lambert. And they can pump this away now with Robson. Off the chest of Christensen and out for the throw in for the visitors. Still goalless here at Walton Hall Park. Lambert. You can see Dunham are starting to play the ball around a little bit more now. They've got the confidence yeah. from the, the last three attacks. I think they've had the better chances in the game as well. So you can see the confidence in the play there throughout the middle and down the left-hand side here. Benison. McGill. Again, the red jerseys of Durham winning the ball back and here's Lambert. Support outside. A heavy touch. Durham can't get the ball into the penalty area. Cross weight on the far side. And uh, Courtney Brosnan comes to claim. No threat on that occasion from the visitors. Next up for Everton, of course, is a league fixture here against West Ham which is next Sunday in the WSL before Manchester United come here in this Continental League Cup competition on the Wednesday. So three successive home fixtures. Hopefully uh, the fans can get their fix and uh, turn out in numbers and get behind Everton. Nil-nil here against Durham this afternoon. Ten minutes away from half-time. Christensen. and unable to pick up but McGill does Maya back for Finnegan and all the way back to Brosnan who's outside of a penalty area Maybe George with the ball left and a bit too heavy again yeah there's a few sloppy passes I know obviously at half time the coach won't be happy with some of the balls that have been running out of play. It's just down to the girls to get on the ball and just settle. Settle down and get the ball in the middle and play through the top players. 
So Durham have this throw in just inside their own half. Lambert. It'll be an Everton throw. Lambert's control was not as she would have liked. Throw in, not quite taken from the, the right <laughs> spot, but who cares? We're in possession with Horton Brosnan feeding it for Finnegan. Bradley playing the ball out wide for uh, Crossweight. Crossweight's ball into the penalty area, gobbled up again by Brosnan. Yeah, good hands there from Brosnan, and it was a great cross again on the on the right hand side from Crossnight. Yeah. It's Robson. Everton hounding her, but unable to win possession back as Lambert gets it into the path of Heppel. And now they can maybe deliver from the left hand side with Brown. Brown's ball into the penalty area. It's bounced awkwardly for Durham inside the 18 18 yard box. Here it comes again and over hit. Too heavy. And behind for the Everton goal kick. We have well, just under eight minutes of the first half to play. And plenty of support from the touchline and instructions from uh, Everton, who are without Jean Luc Vasseur today. I wonder if he picked the team from his bed. <laughs> <laughs> Most probably, yeah. I think obviously he'll have the first the first say in the in the team that started yeah. today. The coaches there to obviously help them out throughout the game, but I think in terms of the players on the pitch, they've got the quality. It's just they need to start playing now. And that's a decent ball in from Meyer, and there's the shot at goal, which comes in in the end from uh, Duggan. They just need to continue with that nice little passage of play there. I should say with the shot at goal. Was the first real save that the goalkeepers had to make, Michelle? Yeah, it is. I think that's the first um, strike on goal this half for Everton. I think Durham have obviously had the better chances and should be, if anything, a couple of goals, yeah. goals up. Yeah, Everton's uh, saviour in the first half has been Courtney Brosnan. Durham in possession with Bradley. Back for Robson. Nowhere to go. It's a, it's a fellow centre back, Catherine Hill. Crossweight. Crossweight again. We'll switch it to air on the left hand side. Inside from Heppel, now Brown. Back with Crossweight. Patient in possession this time, Durham. As Everton have plenty behind the ball, though. There may be a chance to get a ball into the penalty area here. And it's driven in, defended by George. And then the shot from distance is driven by Bradley. And wide of goal, thankfully. Yeah, that was great play down the right-hand side there. I think she just knocked it. I think it was past Benison, but Pen Benison seemed to have stopped. And then she's able to get a cross in. Yeah, Dee Bradley with the eventual shot from distance. The American midfielder. Didn't trouble Brosnan in the Everton goal. And Everton have the throw in with less than five minutes of the first half to play here. Gill down the left hand side has got Everton a free kick Simone yeah that was McGill. a nice play there from Simone getting the free kick down the left hand side a free kick for Everton a chance to put the ball into the penalty area and try and put goalkeeper McCain under a bit of pressure well Gabby George is going forward from the back as we expect Finnegan likewise is loitering on the edge of the 18 yard box Durham defending right on the 18-yard line. I'm not sure they, they need a two-man wall, but it's just it's just um, a 
I suppose to narrow the angle and yeah, as the spray goes down it's, it's just the one in the end can Everton get the breakthrough then before half time free kick from the left hand side five blue jerseys in the penalty area and it's hit with pace and just brushes off the head of Finnegan behind that would have been a perfect time for the goal going in a half time yeah, would have given Everton a big lift. But uh, Finnegan just couldn't get over it. Just brushed off ahead and behind for the goal kick. Which McCain will get on with. Everton will have the wind in their backs in the second half. Lambert for Durham. He's given the ball away, picked up by Clinton. Back with Christensen, but again, not quite the pass that Everton are looking for. A little sloppy in midfield. Yeah, it is, just like I said earlier, a little bit of sloppy in possession. The ball's just running out or about five metres in front of them. Robson's ball for Catherine Hill. Hill goes long, aiming for the run of Galloway, but easily met by Gabby George the flag stays down Durham appealing for offside there I think from the assistance on this near side played forward for McGill laid off for Tony Duggan can't quite keep possession for Everton Lambert plays it wide for Crossweight who's just switched to the left hand side now for these final few minutes of the first half and makes inroads across the face of the 18 yard box before Everton win possession back here's Clinton for Everton and flicked inside by McGill but again not quite the touch from Tony Duggan free kick Everton which they want to get on with quickly Quite rightly so as we approach half time. Here's Patterson for the Blues. Now, Benison. One well, back by Garley in midfield for Everton. And space out wide on the right here for Izzy Christensen. Christensen plays a ball in behind, which at first glance looked decent but was cut out by Robson. Yeah, it's just a little bit of movement there. Izzy's not staying in the central position. She's come out wide, right? And it's a great ball in behind. Um, and then centre half did well there to clear it. Yeah, Robson across and Everton have the corner, which Poppy Pattinson has come across from left to right to take. And Everton have five blue jerseys inside the 18 yard box. In fact, most of them are inside the six yard box at the moment. Trying to put pressure under the goalkeeper here from this Pattinson corner, which is flicked away. Crossweight doesn't quite make the clearance, and Everton have possession again inside this final minute of the first half. And then the touch from Gabby George takes it behind for a Durham goal kick, and that might just about be that in terms of the first period. Yeah, I think Everton will be a little bit disappointed with the first half display. They need to get the ball down on the floor more and try and play in the pockets. I'd like to see the front two coming in more and getting more touches on the ball. And couple, playing off. A couple of minutes of stoppage time to play at the end of this first period. We did have a couple of stoppages for those uh, injuries earlier in the first period. Finnegan's header. And can't quite keep it in play. The throw in is Durham's stoppage time at the end of this first period. Christensen. Christensen's ball forward is a good one. The flag no, the flag doesn't stay down. The flag has been raised, but referee quite happy to let play go on as Durham had possession. Yeah, no, that was nice play there. Great ball in again from Grace Clinton through the Clinton through the middle. Here she is again on the end of this. Clinton just tried to step inside away from uh, Robson. Was that a foul? Oh, it's gone the other way. I think that's a foul. <laughs> I think that's a push in the back. Yeah. I thought Everton might have benefited from the free kick there, but 
referee having none of it. Louise Saunders is out in the middle and deems that it's a free kick for Durham, which is taken and delivered out to Grace Eyre on this left-hand side. Now Heppel. Brown's ball inside for Hill. Played out to the Durham right and it's gone long to the edge of the penalty area for Heppel. And Beth Heppel can't keep possession. And half time approaches here with the game still goalless. And Everton's final chance to attack in this first period has probably come to a close. Um, Durham might just get an opportunity to get a ball into the box before the half-time whistle blows. They do that, but Everton tidy up quite effectively. Benison down that left-hand side does well. Very well. Duggan. Meyer. And Christensen. Christensen picked up by Garley. Better from Everton, and they might just yield something here as Patterson's got space on the left hand side to place a deep cross into the penalty. Christensen's oh. header pushed behind for the corner. Everton's best chance of the game. That was the best pressure to play of the game as well. I think that's what they've needed just before half time that little bit of confidence. It's a great ball in by Patterson. Um, and as he gets ahead on it, the keeper does well to cover the left hand side of the goal. Well, we're in the uh, fourth minute of stoppage time, despite the fact that uh, two were indicated. This will be the final passage of play. Can Everton make a very late breakthrough at the end of the first half? This needs to go into the penalty area. Which it does. And the shot at goal. Well, it was... Had to dig it out, really, to get the shot at goal in the end, but it was straight at the goalkeeper and a simple enough save. So it is half time at Walton Hall Park and the two teams go in goalless at the break. With Durham, you would say, having had the better of the opportunities until very late on at the end of the first half there, Michelle. Yeah, up until the last minute of the stoppage time there in the first half, I think Durham had the better chances. Um, but the keeper, Everton's goalkeeper, Brosnan, has made two great saves, pushed the ball behind for a corner. And you've seen Simone McGill there, the last kick of the game. Um, I think she'd would have liked to have done better with that and, and got it into the corners more than the, the goalkeeper's hands. What have Everton got to do better in the second half, Michelle? Throughout the first half, you could see when Izzy was coming out wide and pulling some of the players out. Um, Durham couldn't cope with that, so it's, it'll, it'll be about the movement. Keep moving once they're past it, moving and get into the spaces. I'd like to see Tony and Simone on the ball a bit more and think sometimes throughout the first half that it was forced into feet when they were both going long or the other way round. So I think getting them two on the ball and working off each other um, would be confident for, for Everton in the second half. And of course there are options on the uh, substitutes bench, but I suppose in terms of a, a striker option, um, what would we be looking at really in terms of uh, maybe Kent and Darley coming on to support up front yeah it'll probably be the Kenza Darley to come on or even um, a substitution for Dan Turner to get up and down the pitch yeah. using their speed well we'll see what happens in the second 45 minutes but at half time here at Walton Hall Park it is goalless let's just have a look at some of the highlights from the first 45 minutes this was the opportunity that came Durham's way early on with the shot that uh, Brosnan dealt with quite confidently. Heppel playing the return ball for Galloway's effort, which was pushed away. And probably a reflection of the first half that the main highlights that we're seeing are the opportunities that came Durham's way. This was a good save from uh, Brosnan here. She was certainly equal to that decent effort that came in good stop yeah that was a great stop as well along with the first one she's done well there to push it around the post and then the corner that was swung in high into the uh, Everton penalty area and uh, I think it might have been a slight miss kick in the end that uh, enabled the ball to loop up into the air Bradley had the effort on goal but Brosnan 
able to put the ball out of the air and Everton was safe. So at half time, no breakthrough from either side. Everton's best chance certainly coming right at the end of the first half from Lizzie Christensen. But uh, they look to improve in the second 45 minutes here at Walton Hall Park. We're at the break. It's Everton nil, Durham nil. for the Blues, wouldn't we? But what have you made of that opening 45? It's been a tough go, and I think it's, you know, it's um, there have been a few changes to the team today, and I think, obviously, it's taken a while for, for the girls to sort of get into the stride, but I think as the half's gone on, I think some of our more technical players have started to show the class, I think as he's obviously moved out to the right-hand side a bit there towards the end, and, and got on the ball a bit more, and I think we'll see a lot more from the likes of there. Uh, I think Bobby Patterson's got down the left well in that half as well, so I think as the game goes on, I expect um, our players to show the best when, when they get more time on the ball. Absolutely. Well, it almost felt, didn't it, like if there'd have been an extra five minutes at the end of that half, you fancied Everton to nick a goal. Do you think we'll see that in the second half, early on, try and nick a goal? Yeah, I think so. I think they started to find the groove a little bit as, as the game went on. You know, the set piece from coming in at the end were good. I think Simone and, and Tony had a bit of a quiet opening 30 minutes, but the runs and the movements as the game went on started to cause a lot more problems. So I think as the game goes on, those spaces open up. I think Everton will go into the game a lot more. Let's hope so. And we've got a young supporter with us today, Cleo. Are you enjoying the game so far? Yeah, I think it's been um, good so far. I believe in the girls a lot and hopefully we'll go score some goals. I think so, Cleo. I think the girls are going to put on an extra special display in this second 45 and get you a goal. Now, who's your favourite player, can I ask? Um, Poppy. Poppy Pattinson's your favourite player. You've been impressed with her so far today? Yes, yeah, she's been doing really good. She has. She nearly got an assist, didn't she? Do we fancy her in the second half to make an impact? Um, yeah. Absolutely. Well, Cleo, I'm glad you're enjoying your day here today. And Pete, if I just come to you now as well, obviously we were saying no goals thus far in the half, but do you think we'll see a change? We did see Kenza Dali there warming up towards the end of that first half. Do you think we can expect to see her make, be made an introduction in the second half? I think so, yeah. And I think Kenza's the type of player who can make a big impact in a game like this. Uh, Kenza's been on, on great, in great form for us so far this season. Um, I think she's still looking for the first goal as well, so this would be a perfect time for us to get it. Um, I think, you know, the first half we've, 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 you know, we found it a bit difficult to get into our stride early on, but we started to show, um, you know, how we can play towards the end of the first half. I think Durham maybe might find it more difficult in the second half as they start to tire, and I think our class should should shine through, and uh, certainly Kenza Daly could make all the difference. 
Like she, she'll she'll be watching this. Go, yeah, Kenza, you've, you're yet to score for Everton, so it would be great. And she, listen, she scores screamers all the time in the warm up. She's scoring absolute worldies. So it'd be great to see her do it on the pitch, wouldn't it? Absolutely. And she's she's on soft form for France as well. She's every every time there's an international break, she seems to score for France. So yeah, I'm, I'm hopefully today can be the day that she breaks a duck for Everton. Let's hope so because you know there's a lot of fans who've made the way out today as well. It is freezing cold, and as you can see, we're kind of in the trees at the moment. The sprinklers did come on at half time, and we don't want to be getting wet in this weather. But Pete, you said you fancied a 4 5 nil. Do you still see that happening? Four. Four! <laughs> we'll take four. I'm going to get quick, quick full time predictions from all three of you, so you're going 4 nil. I've got to stick with it now, yeah, 4 nil. Yeah, Cleo, what prediction from you? Um. Yeah, 4 0. 4 0 and a goal for Poppy, eh? Yeah. Yes. Matt, how about yourself, mate? I'm going to sound really negative now, I'm just saying 2 0. <laughs> I think as the game goes on, uh, I was looking into it, yeah, not the two late goals I'm going to go for. I love that. Well, I was going to say one, so we'll see. Well, we're all calling a win and a clean sheet, so let's hope so. Let's hope. I'm hoping that uh, Cleo and Peter are right here and we can get four goals in that second half. But stick with us and hopefully a big three points come into Everton. Free kick here to Everton. As it's played in and flicked on and onto the roof of the net. Gouvin holds it up so well. Member of the French World Cup squad in the last World Cup. Emsley provides the cross. Might work out here for Everton. It's a super goal for Sorensen. Oh, how they have worked that well. From the assist from Emsley and the cool finish of Sorensen to open up her account in Everton Blue. Here's Leon. That's slack though, give it away. Towards Daly, Kenton Darley picking up the loose ball and scores! Oh, it's a real soft one for Everton co to concede, but for West Ham United, they are level. Get with it, get with it. Some proving a little awkward for Leon, but she did well. Over the top for Daly, and Rachel Daly, that's a good save. Big, big save from Sandy McIver. Gonna get another free kick, and they're not hanging around. Emsley finds a cross in towards Govan, fisted well. Back in it goes again. Izzy Christensen for Lucy Graham. Oh, brilliant! Oh, it's absolutely magnificent. And in spectacular fashion, Everton are back in front. Kenza Darley. Pickpocketed. This is McGill to finish it all off. Oh, good save from Arnold. From Christensen. And there's Graham. Two goals for Lucy Graham. And another three points today for Everton. Final score here Everton three, West Ham United one. Just a reminder to everybody about our upcoming fixtures here at Walton Hall Park. So next Wednesday, we are facing Manchester United in the Conti Cup. And that will be streamed live on our YouTube channel. Following that, on the Sunday, we have West Ham United in the league here at Walton Hall Park. And we can't wait to see you all here. Come on, you Blues.
reminder to you all about our upcoming fixtures. Next up, we face West Ham United next Sunday here at Walton Hall Park. And we can't wait to see you all here for your continued support. Following that, a big one the next Wednesday when we face Manchester United in the Conti Cup again. And we will be streaming that live on our YouTube channel. We can't wait to see you all there. Come on, you Blues. Yeah, the Everton players making their way back out for this second half here at Bolton Hall Park. It's Alan Irwin and Michelle Hinnigan on the commentary duty here. Former Everton skipper with the expert analysis during the first 45 minutes and likewise for the second period where Everton will hope to make a breakthrough. We have seen Michelle the substitutes, as you'd expect, just uh, keeping warm during the half-time interval, but be interesting to see whether we see any early changes in the second half. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see the changes. Um, we've got really, really strong and powerful players on the bench to come on. And you've got Dan Turner there, who's been at the club for years as well, and she's known for the speed down the left-hand side. So it'll be interesting to see what the, the substitutes are during the second half. Yeah, but initially, it looks as though Everton will begin as they did the first 45 minutes with the 11 that looks like this, Brosnan in goal, Maya, Finnegan, George and Pattinson across the back, Christensen, Benison and Clinton in midfield with Garley, McGill and Duggan. The front three, although Garley played a much deeper sort of midfield role as the half progressed. Yeah, she did. She was in changing positions with Izzy Christiansen and you see in there when Izzy was coming out on the on the wide right, that's when she would get on the ball and, and make things happen in terms of attacking wise. Here come Durham for the second 45 minutes. A quick warm up routine before they are ready to go for the second half. I don't know whether the uh, the wind had a major influence on the first half, but maybe to the extent that uh, the goalkeeper was certainly able to get some distance on the clearances, and that'll be the case for Courtney Brosnan, but Everton will have the wind at their backs in this second period, so uh, maybe that'll put Durham under a bit of extra pressure. Yeah, definitely. I think it's the wind's quieting down a little bit this second half, so it may pick back up, and hopefully Brosnan can get the same picks as um, McCain did in the first half. Yeah, I think you're right, Michelle. It doesn't seem to be uh, whistling through our microphones as it was in the first half. So uh, maybe a little warmer for the second 45 minutes. Won't affect those players, though, out there in terms of... Uh, they'll be as warm as anything having uh, run for those first 45. Right, we're just about set for the second half here. Durham have a little pre-match huddle you, you normally see that before the first period gets underway but not the second no that's just the, the captain's chance then to to get them geared up for the second half as well anything that's been said in there just to re-emphasize the point that obviously it's nil nil here and it's anyone's game at the minute so Durham get us underway for the second half Galloway kicks us off and Everton put the ball out of play on the far side by the head of 
Meyer. Finnegan, I should say. Throw in Everton. Played right for Durham and down that line for Lambert, who's made that run down the channel. Faced by Tattinson and Lambert's got a ball into the penalty area, gobbled up again by Brosnan. No problems for her. Decent run by Lambert into the channel to get the ball into the box. Yeah, there's a good ball in the box as well. I was just waiting for a Durham player to, to run front post there, just in front of the goalkeeper. Back with Everton and Finnegan's ball across for Gabby George. Left footed delivery, just tried to switch it out wide. It is picked up by Christensen in the end, and then played on by uh, Clinton. Down the right for Meyer, but Christensen won't breach that. Durham have it. With crossweight. Crossweight. Made progress into the Everton half, but was well marshalled. Benison. Playing that deep in midfield role again. Are Everton looking to get Christensen a little further forward? Yeah, it looks like you can see a few runs in behind that as he's made there for the first couple of minutes. You can see Dunham um, swapped two of the players around as well. Um, crossing down the right hand side. Now she's swapped over to the left hand side yeah. for the second half. Here, crossweight's ball into Galloway. Galloway trying to tee it up for Heppel who had the shot at goal. It was decent football from Durham and well held up by Galloway and just the little touch for Heppel and the shot fired high over the crossbar. Yeah, that was really good hold up play there from Galloway just out inside the box. Um, and then a strike there from Heppel. Usually you see them flying in top corner. Thankfully, sailed over the crossbar from the Everton perspective and it remains nil-nil. effort was well over in the end had to uh, an additional ball that uh, effort from Beth Heppel which sailed over free kick here for Everton and a yellow card as well for Catherine Hill Catherine Hill shown yellow I think she's a bit disappointed with that here's the, uh, the replay it was her miscontrol really that enabled the ball to run through and McGill was brought down, free kick. Yeah, it looks like she weren't expecting it to come to get past Tony Duggan there. Um, and as she's stuck a leg up, the ball's bounced over and she's seen obviously Simone McGill and the threat that she has in behind. The Scottish defender has shown the yellow card and Everton have a chance to get the ball into the box and hopefully deliver the goods. Benison and Pattinson. It is going to be Benison who plays a teasing ball into the penalty area. It's one of those where any slight touch causes the goalkeeper a problem, but I think in the end, goalkeeper McKay was happy to see it run behind for the goal kick and knew that uh, no Everton player was going to get a touch on it. So a set piece goes to waste. Yeah, I think it was just waiting for someone to run back close there. Um, a late running into the box and get a little touch on the ball. George got something on it. Garley plays it forward. The touch on from McGill. The offside flag raised on the far side, which almost caught us both unawares. Yeah, it's much better there from Everett. You could see as soon as it was down the left hand side, the three. Um, Grace Clinton, Tony Duggan, and Simone McGill. Three girls were sprinting into the box. Free kick, though, for Durham. Almost five minutes of the second half played. Still, we await the breakthrough. Goalless at Everton. Last time they met Durham, of course, we saw the highlights before the game. 2 1 victory for Everton. 
have had problems in front of goal this season, Michelle, because it's Everton have failed to score in four of their eight league games in the uh, WSL. Yeah, they have, and I think the last couple of games have started to find their own feet and, and start the goal scoring. Um, I think it was Simone McGill who started that um, scoring here at Morton Park against Man United, so hopefully they can take that into this game in the second half and start getting the confidence in front of goal, and especially the likes of Simone again and the likes of Tony and Grace Clinton, yeah. even if she can. I mean, Everton did net three in Jean-Luc Vasseur's first game in charge, that victory at Leicester in the Continental Cup. But failed to find the back of the net today. Plenty of time to do so, though. Although we could be on extra duty if it stays all square. As we will have a penalty shootout at the end of this competition to determine who gets the extra points from the uh, draw. This was the case when Durham met Manchester United earlier in the uh, competition in mid-October. Yeah, I think that might have been the talk inside the changing rooms at half time that they don't want it to go to penalties. Throw in here, taken by Holmes into the Everton penalty area, looping up into the air. Brown tries to win it. Everton have it back. Forward for McGill, a little touch inside for Clinton. The runner on the far side is Maya, but she won't get there. up for Durham incidentally is a cup match themselves next weekend against either Norton and Stockton or Leeds still we await the uh, opposition in that one for them in the uh, third round of that competition that they've got next week before they meet Blackburn in the championship the following weekend Everton's next three West Ham and Manchester United here West Ham in the WSL and Manchester United in the uh, League Cup competition this Continental Cup competition before they go to Tottenham before Christmas 19th of December. Nice set of fixtures really to look forward to. Everton. McGill trying to get in behind. She's got a ball into the penalty area. Managed to defend it Durham with Holmes. It's not away yet though. Still work for Durham to do and they do it effectively in the end. The ball is played wide. Decent ball. Here's Heppel in possession, on for Lambert. Lambert's ball, might break here for Holmes to get the shot in. And that was a chance for Durham again, and Holmes will be disappointed that she didn't find the target there or make the goalkeeper work. Yeah, I think she'll be really disappointed with that second opportunity there, the game. I think she should have done better there with the shot. It was good play there from Durham. Oh, uh, yes. Holmes, yeah, screwed it wide see she's just leaning back before she's going to take the shot which is obviously took her over the crossbar more influential play from Lambert though as uh, she drove forward and Durham are still posing a threat to Everton here's Duggan back inside her own half trying to win possession back but uh, taken by crossweight in towards Lambert and Finnegan is there to lash the ball into touch that's a uh, confident defending because she did exactly what she had to do just get the ball away yeah it was a great play again from crossface in the middle looking to find things and looking to get the ball down and find the pocket in between well changes afoot here we go a double change for Everton making way is Garley and Lucy Graham is coming on for Everton. So that's the first change. Lucy Graham is on. And Kanza Dali is also coming on as well. With Clinton withdrawn. So the double change. What, 10 minutes into the second half? pretty much expected yeah I think we spoke about Dali coming on in half time there it adds that extra bit of speed and also the quality there in the middle along with Lucy Graham so Everton have made those changes 
Graham and Dali on. Where will you expect Graham to play? Just behind the the front. Yeah, it looks like she's playing on the right hand side there. We usually I'm used to seeing it in the cent in the central field position. You can see um, Dali who's come on just playing in front of Benison and yeah. Christiansen by the looks of it. See how it pans out. But, uh, decision taken 10 minutes into the second half. Finnegan for Everton. Here is Dali. Meyer. Laid off by Duggan going for the return but uh, asking a bit much of it and this will be dealt with by Robson who just gets the ball away off Duggan at the expense of an Everton throw though which is quickly taken Darley receives turns and brings in Meyer Everton can't get the ball into the penalty area initially so work it back and over towards this left hand side with Pattinson's ball on for Benison. Pattinson. Benison again. Runs Everton's way and maybe they can deliver into the box now. They do so. Defended by Durham. Cleared towards the halfway line. Finnegan trying to get the better of Galloway. George. Pattinson's ball in behind is a decent one for Simone McGill. Can McGill get there? Yes is the answer. Plenty inside the penalty area now for Everton at the far post. It's oh. Lucy Graham off the crossbar. Well, an immediate impact. Lucy Graham on as a substitute. And that effort just off the top of the crossbar. Yeah, that was a great ball in behind there for Simone McGill to chase down to the line. She pulls it back gets a header and crosses it back post and it's a great strike from Lucy Graham just doesn't dip enough yeah Graham meeting it on the volley and unfortunately off the crossbar so it comes back inside the 18 yard box and a header from Gabby George is over the crossbar but Everton beginning to put Durham under a bit more pressure yeah and I think the substitutes that have just been made a couple of minutes ago there have given them a little confidence boost and um, with the two chances over the last 30 seconds which is obviously great for the girls well let's hope it's a sign of things to come in this second half still Everton nil Durham nil Everton winning possession back again in midfield good work from Benison ball forward has too much pace on it for Duggan goalkeeper McCain bowls the ball out to her right hand side long forward for Galloway to chase but no problems for Gabby George to see it through to a goalkeeper anyone in Everton jersey we're back with the Durham goalkeeper wrapped up towards the halfway line back from George to goalkeeper Osman. Robson just got a foot on it but it's picked up now by Darley for Everton support out on the right from Lucy Graham four inside the penalty area as the ball comes in over the head of Simone McGill but put behind by Durham for a corner and Everton are beginning to press yeah it's the two substitutes again Darley into Lucy Graham there with a great ball into the box yeah Kansa Darley the French international brought into the fray 10 minutes into the second half along with Scottish midfielder Lucy Graham who's already struck the crossbar and Everton have this corner on their left plenty inside the box 
flicked on at the near post and the header at the far post yes. and finally it struck home and the referee has blown a whistle but I don't think it's ruling the goal out from Tony Duggan who has finally netted since her return to the club surely it counts by the players reactions I, I don't think it's going to I thought the whistle went afterwards but our referee Louise Saunders is well I'm unsure uh, I think the players feel that it has been ruled out let's have a look at it again as the ball was flicked on at the near post and then headed back across goal for Tony Duggan to fire home you can see just before Tony goes to kick the ball there's, the ref a, there's a clash of heads obviously but really that's a 50-50 ball a clash of heads and I'm not sure the referee would be correct here in awarding a free kick no you could see just before Tony Duggan goes to kick the ball the ref goes to blow a whistle and she, her arm moves we haven't a look at the replay yeah we'll so try and ascertain clash. exactly when the referee blew her whistle. The ball's coming in now. She moves her arm going the to ball play. heads. Now. Wow. Did you see Manchester United <laughs> Arsenal the other day? Yes. <laughs> Smith row. Yes. Yep. Which I it's thought arm. categorically was a goal. Uh, why, the, why the goalkeeper would lay on the floor for that long yeah. and, not, and not face play is beyond me. She's given. But the goal has been given. And Everton do lead thanks to that Tony Duggan strike. At last, in more ways than one, not just in terms of this game, Everton have made the breakthrough and Tony Duggan finally has her goal, having re-signed for Everton after four years in Spain with Barcelona and Atletico Madrid. Tony Duggan is back. Yeah, that'll do a confidence the world around. It was a great strike, obviously hard, hard technique to keep the ball down because it was coming in. It was just bounced just before her, so she's done well to get it in the back of the net. Good finish. And now it's the Durham players who, after the goal was given, surrounded the referee and they are probably asking the same question, when did the whistle blow? But uh, the fact of the matter is, Everton lead by a goal to nil and Tony Duggan just on the hour mark making the breakthrough for Everton. 1-0 and something of a relief I have to say Michelle yeah definitely I think the, the past couple of minutes before the actual goal went in yeah. I think with the substitutes as well it was the, better yeah the players they look more confident on the ball they're attacking they're actually making use of the ball more than they, than they were in the first half yeah substitutes have certainly had an impact Lucy Graham and Kansas Daly and Everton put Durham under a bit more pressure since those two changes and have been rewarded with that opening goal. It'll be interesting to see what Durham do from here in terms of uh, trying to push and get an equaliser. It might, might just play into Everton's hands. They've done really, really well defensively as well for 60 minutes, so if they maintain what they've completed for the past 60 minutes, I'm sure that a chance will come their way as well, like they did, had a couple of chances in the first half. Brosnan getting the ball away when under pressure there from uh, Galloway. Durham's throw to be taken by Grace Eyre on the far side. Well, it won't be because she's been withdrawn, just as I say that. Grace Eyre is replaced and coming on is Lauren Briggs. Essentially a midfielder, a product of the youth system at uh, Durham. And on to replace Grace Eyre. So, first change as far as Durham are concerned in this game. And here's another. Emily Roberts is coming on. And Bridget Galloway. Bridget Galloway is off. So, Emily Roberts is on. A striker for a striker. So Emily Roberts will lead the line by the looks of things with Galloway's withdrawal. That's the 
response from the Durham coach, Lee Sanders. A double change to see whether they can be as influential as Everton's double change was. Yeah, it's looks like they're going off for the attack now. Obviously, it's nothing to lose. There's still half an hour of the game to play. Um, and you know how important it is to get a uh, point in this league table. The results do go Everton's way and they come away with the points today and then get the better of Manchester United a week on Wednesday. Well, qualification for the quarter-final stage may well happen. Ball cleared by Izzy Christensen up towards Tony Duggan, but can't really get anywhere near it. Played out by Robson to the substitute Lauren Briggs. Back with Everton. Harley's ball looking to release Simone McGill. First touch takes it into the penalty area, but Catherine Hill is there to defend. Yeah, Hill's done well there to get goal side to Simone. Obviously, it's a great ball in the game from Darley there into Simone Miguel. Darley again. Meyer back with Christensen now. Darley. Lambert picking up for Durham, feeding it to that left-hand side and forward for Emily Roberts but across comes Finnegan well played by Everton as soon as they say that they give the ball away back with the Blues though Darley facing her own goal like it goes for Finnegan better played inside for Tony Duggan Instructions barked from the uh, touchline down below us. Keeping Everton alert. Concentration levels important, of course, at this stage of the game as the legs begin to feel it a little, Michelle. Yeah, definitely, because it's only 1 0 as well. And obviously, it's important that the Everton don't switch off and stay defensively tight. Uh, you could see they've got loads of play there down the right hand side. It just need to switch it more down here on the left hand side there's loads of space for Pattinson and also Benison down the left hand side just entering the final quarter of the game is this where you begin to feel it a little yeah definitely this is where the legs and obviously with the cold uh, the, uh, the legs start to feel a little bit tighter you, you're starting to give everything that's left in the tank and importantly I suppose this is where substitutes can play a part in the game we've already seen the impact of the Everton double change 10 minutes into the second half but you know, if the legs are really feeling it there are people on the bench nowadays to come on and replace you of course and just give that fresh injection yeah definitely you've seen the the impact of the two substitutes for Everton and what they've done to the team there in terms of lifted confidence and it looks like Everton are now starting to get the ball down and play to the strengths Cancer Dali almost given away back with Finnegan and now George Pattinson Everton ball Pompey Pattinson to take Gill flicked away by Durham once more to the halfway line Christensen's touch brings in Finnegan goes Christensen again involved ball forward is a good one for Duggan the touch inside as well before Robson got in the way and here's George tidying up again for Everton at the back Benison laid off for Pattinson Darley Losing out to Heppel. Heppel's ball for Lambert. Lambert's got support from Brown on the right, but that's not the pass that's going to bring Brown into play. 
and steered back to the Everton goalkeeper. No, I don't think she wanted it there as well. You could see by her body position in there, the way she reacted after the ball. Good touch from Benison for Duggan. Sent down the line for McGill to chase. She'll get there as well with Robson putting the challenge in. And it's a decent challenge too. Yeah, it's a very, very good challenge there. And obviously that Simone's won the throw on the left-hand side. Another change. And Catherine Hill is coming off to be replaced by Ellie Christian. Kristen is coming on. Essentially, was played at fullback for most of the uh, season. So we'll see exactly where she drops into in this change that's made by Durham, their third change of the afternoon, with 19 minutes of the 90 to play. trying to get the ball back to her uh, own defenders and giving it away ball battered into touch again by Durham for an Everton throw Duggan Lambert for Durham over ahead again and is Brown harried by Darley pushed away and wide for Lauren Briggs Briggs goes all the way back to her own goalkeeper and that's a tricky ball for the goalkeeper to deal with and in fact she can't it's an Everton corner no she could she, that was a poor ball in there from the left back it's bounced just before the keeper as well and with the wind it's, it's took it a little bit further into a uh, into a shoulder and it looks like she's tried to control it and miscontrolled it out for a corner yeah, Lauren Briggs who uh, came on as a substitute just put a, a bit too much on that to say the least but Everton have got the corner and maybe can punish Durham for that mistake you'd think a second goal would really seal it as far as the afternoon is concerned can Everton double their advantage here corner from the right hand side goes near post and Everton will get the opportunity to try again Poppy Pattinson probably not the best of deliveries that first one she's got Benison there short if uh, she wants to use her but looks like it's going long into the penalty area again that's a decent delivery and that's a decent header as well from Lucy Graham and it wasn't far over the crossbar. No, she's done she's done really, really well there to get herself free in the box and it's a great header, it just doesn't dip in time, just underneath the, uh, the crossbar. But it was a great ball in there from Pattinson on the second time round. Pattinson's corner, the second time of asking, as you can see, was right on the money. And Lucy Graham unfortunately couldn't convert. Good chance. Still Everton 1, Durham 0. Ball from Graham that time is cut out by Robson. Now Briggs. That ball's out of play for what will be an Everton throw. Quickly taken by the Blues. Back with Meyer. Graham. Oh, a bit too much pace on that for Benison. Yeah, you can see nice them idea. Using brilliant play down the left hand side the past five minutes. You can see them using um, Pattinson and Benison down the left hand side here a little bit more. Obviously, re recognising that the Durham players are starting to get a little bit tired. Yeah, just over the quarter of an hour for 90 to play. Abby George winning the header. Away by Robson. Brought down well. And the ball forward from Crossweight. Just carried a bit too much weight on it in the end for Brown. Daniel Brown couldn't reach it. And Everton have the goal kick.
Finnegan. Meyer. Run back by Briggs. Goalkeeper stand outside of a 18 yard box to clear. At it well. Now, Darley for Everton. That's a good ball and in on goal, Simone McGill. Oh. Just a heavy touch allowed the goalkeeper to come and smother. That's a great disguise pass there in front of Darley into the right hand side. Simone's touch just took it a little bit too um, far away from his feet to, to allow the goalkeeper to come and collect. Lambert can't keep that ball in play for Durham. It will be an Everton throw. Everton have played better in the second half, Michelle. Yeah, much better, and I think it's from the two substitutes that have been made in the second half as well. They've brought the team a little bit of confidence, they're constantly getting on the ball as well, and they look really, really lively. The head of Kristen and in the field, Brown. Substitute Kristen back for. Robson. Now Briggs. Don't know, they've got to push on in the final quarter of an hour if they are to get anything from this game. And here's Crossweight turning and getting the shot away, which was well blocked on the edge of the penalty area. Izzy Christensen was in the way. And Everton have possession again. You can see how much Darley gets on the ball there in Darley and Simone. So linking off really, really well there, and obviously Lucy Graham coming inside now. It certainly made a difference. Is Gabby George venturing into opposition territory? Pattinson. Ball picked up by Christensen. Played wide, but cut out by Briggs. Emily Roberts for Durham, he's done very well and has ventured into a bit of space inside the Everton half, still Roberts and still going doing very well and eventually screwing her shot well wide but what went before was pretty impressive what a run that was, I think she's drove from inside of her own half and it's absolutely excellent run down the left hand side and then disguised and again took on I think it was Meg Finnegan in the box but it should have done better there with the, the shot at the end. Simone McGill just can't get a touch ahead of the goalkeeper who smothers again at her feet. And Everton are preparing to make another change with Dan Turner to come on. But play is held up for a bit of attention to uh, Crossweight, I think, who's down. Let's just have a look at this run from uh, Emily Roberts, who picked up possession, as you say, Michelle, deep inside her own half and was prepared to take on all comers. I mean, it's a great bit of skill there to, to get past uh, Tony in, in the beginning, in the first instance, and then she's drove. She's been able to drive with the ball about 40 yards. And then just before she gets into the box, there's another little bit of skill. Yeah. Well, Simone McGill is going off and Dan Turner is coming on for the final 12 minutes or so a bit of experience coming on here yeah I used to play with Dan Turner as well I think she, like you said she has got the experience in her to hold it out with a 1-0 lead as well but she's also got the pace um, even though she's getting on a little bit now in terms of age she's still got it 30 is that getting on a bit <laughs> yes <laughs> In football, in terms, yeah. And, uh, change as far as Durham are concerned. Hannah Greenwood is coming on here. Crossweight can't play any further part and is withdrawn. And Hannah Greenwood is coming on. Confirmation of that change. Hannah Greenwood is on. Number 
So both sides making use of their complement of changes. Yeah, I think that Lily Crossnate has a really good, a really good game. I think every yeah. time she got on the ball, she looked, she looked dangerous when she was attacking. Yeah, certainly posed a threat. Although that run from Emily Roberts before might have just cemented her place in the team next week. <laughs> Starting lineup. <laughs> so just under ten to play. Everton leading by a goal to nil. And the fans are on the drums. I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming your way. Here's Kansas Darley. Dan Turner. Receives it back. Played wide. Christensen. George inside for Finnegan. Out by Briggs. Here's Gabby George. Decent ball through for Lucy Graham. The possession football from Everton making Durham work. Just when you find it hard to work, of course, inside the final ten as well. This is decent from Everton. Yeah, it is. You can see uh, they're just trying to pass the ball and keep the ball moving, which will obviously tire out the Durham team, which is what they're looking to do. Yeah, just pull them, stretch them. Final ball there from Kansas Darley is cut out. But Everton will regain possession immediately. Back from Turner to goalkeeper Brosnan. And here's Finnegan. Christensen drops deep to pick up. Graham. Turner down that left hand side. Pulled away by Robson. Cleared as far as the halfway line where George is there as ever for Everton. He's had a good game actually, Gary George has mopped things up at the back. Benison's ball to the right and back with Benison to switch across to the Everton left hand side again. Turn his throw, Christensen. George once more. Graham, good control and touch. Unfortunately, the pass just split Benison and Darley and is picked up by Roberts, who brings in Lambert, who's marauding forward into the penalty area. Good run from Lambert, and the shot was just wide of Brosnan's left hand post, and that was an opportunity. It was a good break as well by Durham. That was an excellent break down the left hand side there. I think she'll be a bit disappointed with the final outcome there, but I think she should be at the target from that angle. I thought for a moment it was going to hit the target as well as uh, Lambert broke into the penalty area. Just tried to, you could see exactly what she was trying to do, curl it into the far corner. Yeah, she just hasn't got the right technique on it as she's, you can see here as she goes to kick it. Yeah. Just slices the outside of it. Didn't curl into the corner, curled away from goal in the end. Disappointing finish from her perspective as Darley plays the ball in. A chance here, but the offside flag is raised against Tony Duggan. Keeper made the save, nevertheless, and countered. No, but you can see again a great ball through there from Darley. So Durham, with five and a half minutes to play, will feel they need to push forward and may just leave a hole or two at the back for Everton to exploit. Everton are preparing to bring on uh, Nathalie Bjorn very shortly. Benison's touch is a good one. Christensen, Benison went for the return, won't get there. And this may be the signal for Everton to make this change. With Bjorn to come on, the Swedish defender will replace Maya. Maya. 
So, uh, I had to make way. And Bjorn is on. Straightforward enough swap. Yeah, I think it's like for like in terms of positioning. Straight on the back, nice and tight. So I think the, the instructions will be to keep it nice and compact and tight. And don't, obviously, don't let the left the left wingers do them. Yeah. <laughs> keep an eye on Emily Roberts, I think. yard runs again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bjorn's gone right across there to slot in at right back. Good touch from Lucy Graham. Everton pouring forward now. Pattinson inside the penalty area. There's the cut back. Oh. It falls for Graham. Great save by the keeper and Graham can't smuggle home the rebound. Well, a mad scramble in the end, but Graham almost had two opportunities. She just couldn't sort of feet out quick enough. I think the keeper saved it and pushed it onto her. And then she hasn't re reacted to it. And by the time it has, it's gone past the post. Actually, that's a good save, the first one, isn't it, from the goalkeeper? Great save from the goalkeeper. She was at full stretch there, was uh, McCain and made a very decent stop. The ball inadvertently came back into Lucy Graham's path, but uh, good goalkeeping. And it's still Everton 1, Durham 0, inside the final four minutes of the 90. A second goal kills the game. Everton will feel they've got it wrapped up at the moment, but of course, anything can happen. It only takes a second to score a goal, as somebody once said. There's the shot from distance, which uh, is well wide of goal. Speculative, I think I'd call that from Fabian. Yeah, I think she just <laughs> seen the space open up in front of him and thought, why not? Have a crack. Away by Robson. Your fans wrapped up today as they need to be against the elements. Have you warmed up at all, Michelle? No, still defrosting. <laughs> <laughs> the wind stopped, at least that's a good time. Here's Darley. Lucy Graham picks up. Turner. George, Finnegan, now Bjorn, good play by Everton this and Duggan's gone for the return, it falls into a path, unable to get the finish, Darley was shaping to shoot before the ball was pushed away from it, Turner, George, Commanding, bringing in Christensen. Bjorn wide. Benison. Right, right idea, not quite the execution. Yeah, just a little bit too much power on the final ball there from Benison. But much better play from Everton in the second half. Yeah, certainly, barring one or two chances that uh, came Durham's way from the weaving runs from uh, Roberts and the surge forward from Lambert. I think Everton have pretty much kept Durham at bay in this second period. Yeah, the second half they definitely have. In terms of the first half, I think Durham had the better chances. There should have been two goals up uh, at the half-time break, but I think Everton have come out the blocks and, like I said earlier, the two substitutes have made a massive in influence on the game. And the half-time chat must have worked as well, hey, Michelle? Yeah, <laughs> Might have been on the phone to Jean-Luc Vasseur from his sick bed. Who knows? Maybe we'll find well, out. On Zoom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's so many ways to communicate nowadays, isn't there? Here's Pattinson out wide. Decent ball into the path of Turner. Turner's cut back. Cleared by Durham. We're inside the final minute of the 90. We're going to have four minutes of stoppage time. Four minutes for Everton to see out, or possibly go on and uh, get a second to put this game well and truly to bed. Everton leading by a goal to nil, and for the vast majority of this second half.
have been in command who played some decent football the passing's been better in the second half crisp and Nita Roberts for Durham can't find Heppel and Finnegan is there for the Blues now Christensen Benison's ball inside for Graham Lucy Graham was looking for Pattinson who's further forward of course following the introduction of Dan Turner So in stoppage time, we'll, we'll give Michelle a couple of minutes to think about a, a player of the match. A couple of minutes to think, hey, Michelle. We've got three more minutes of stoppage time to play. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure at all. Ball back with goalkeeper Brosnan, who certainly played her part today, particularly in that first half. Kept Everton in it. Not that I'm influencing your thinking in any way, Michelle. That's not for me to do as Robson comes away with the ball for Durham, who are looking for a final opportunity to level this game. They won't be able to do so from that piece of play because Everton have the goal kick. those that have been inside this stadium it looks like it's turning out to be an enjoyable afternoon in the end following that goal just on the hour mark from Tony Duggan a controversial goal from uh, the Durham perspective if you saw uh, any men's football earlier in the week between uh, Manchester United and Arsenal we could liken it very much to the goal that Emil Smith-Rowe scored for Arsenal when the referee blew his whistle after the ball hit the back of the net and I think that might have been the case here today George with the ball forward back with Dan Turner George neatly done again Turner laid off by Duggan there for the return pushing it forward for Darley but too far ahead of her and laid back to Durham goalkeeper by Ellie Christian. Here's Lauren Briggs on the far side. Lucy Graham. Well, with the ball inside Durham territory, player of the match from you, Michelle. If the Everson goalkeeper, Courtney Brosnan, would have kept up the performance from the first half and had a few more saves, I would have gave it to her. But I think today's man of the match I'm going to give to Gabby George, um, left side to centre off. She's been really composed on the ball, she's held it together, um, you've seen her there dribble. So she's got all different parts to a game that, obviously, today she's held up the striker at times and also you can see her there leading from the back. So Gabby George is my player of the game today. Everton's number six. And uh, a tremendous performance. I wouldn't disagree with that at all, Michelle. I think uh, you heard in commentary throughout how composed and effective that uh, Gabby George was. And there she is, player of the match this afternoon for Everton, who are claiming the points here against Durham. Final seconds of the game. Turner with this throw in inside for Lucy Graham who certainly played her part since the introduction from the bench as did Darley as well but here's Emily Roberts final chance for Durham we're over the four minutes Lauren Briggs with the ball down the left for Lambert Lambert into the penalty area and well defended by Bjorn who gets the goal kick and that should just about be that yeah I think that sums up the mentality of Durham as well it's the last 5-10 seconds of the game and they're still attacking and not giving up obviously they're looking for the point yeah they've played their part alright and there is the full time whistle the job is done as far as Everton are concerned the points 
are in the bag in this Continental Cup Group B game and Everton have won it by a Tony Duggan goal to nil a controversial goal in the end that came just around the hour mark tucked home neatly by Tony Duggan who will be relieved to have finally got off the mark since her return to the club but she took it neatly and after a lengthy delay the goal was eventually awarded and that is sufficient enough to give Everton the victory and they've one more group game to play against Manchester United here a week on Wednesday and it keeps them very much in the hunt for a place in the quarter-finals of this competition so overall a much improved second half performance Michelle which was enough to earn Everton the points yeah definitely I think the second half performance was much better than the first the substitute made for Everton had a huge impact on the team but also the, the way they were playing they were able to link up with each other they were working off each other in terms of Darley and Simone McGill went before she went off and then even Lucy Graham interchanging places with the likes of Tony Duggan and then they were using the left hand side with Benison down here and obviously it was a great second half and it was a great finish from Tony as well I think many may have come today expecting possibly a goal fest playing a, a championship side but I think we should give credit to Durham for their part today they played very well in the opening 45 minutes and were unlucky not to go in at half time leading and as you said in commentary Michelle pressed right to the very end and still had one or two opportunities on the counter attack in that second half yeah definitely I don't think Everton would have underestimated Durham because we know Durham's um, way of play is obviously defensively and they're, they're really really defensively strong you can see some of the girls there the size of them and the physicality that they've got on the pitch and it was nothing that I didn't expect today in terms of Durham and then they were fighting up until the last 10 to 30 seconds of the game as well well let's have a look at the uh, winning goal which came Everton's way just around the hour mark as the players you can see there in a in a huddle the post match analysis is now underway I suppose and a little bit of a, a debrief with the uh, players but overall they did their job helped certainly by the changes that were made in the second period I think that certainly influenced Everton's play the passing was crisper and neater in the second half and they managed to expose Durham on one or two occasions and made the vital breakthrough of course that resulted in them claiming the one goal victory courtesy of that Tony Duggan strike. Yeah, you can see this with Christian fairly in the debrief on the pitch, obviously. Here is the goal, Michelle, which won it in the end for Everton. The corner from the left hand side, which was headed back across goal, and on the half volley, Tony Duggan was there after that clash of heads. Had uh, yeah. seen two players there go down, and it was really a 50 50 ball. It was uh, Robson who was, who was down with the uh, George and my word thankfully both were okay and unable to get up but after some deliberation the goal was given so excellent stuff in the end then from Everton Tony Duggan's goal has won it for the Blues they've beaten championship side Durham by that solitary goal to nil uh, job done from Michelle and myself Alan Irwin thanks very much for your company this afternoon we'll hand you back to Sarah Holpin
Charlton Hall Park and it finished Everton 1, Durham 0. Delighted to be joined by Gabby George. Now, Gabby, a tough game, but another important win and another clean sheet. How are you feeling after that one? Yeah, we always knew this game was going to be difficult coming into it. Durham give us a tough game every single time and they do well week in, week out at um, the respective leagues that they play in. Um, but we just needed to turn up and take the three points to push push us and put us in a good place in the Conti Cup. Well, it has been good, hasn't it, to get those two back-to-back -back wins in the Conti Cup after we got off to a dis disappointing start to the campaign against Manchester City. And, of course, our previous league game as well, clean sheet. As a defender, you must be delighted with two clean sheets on the bounce as well. Yeah, I think it's something that we needed to take more pride on at the start of the season. We didn't keep the clean sheets and we were leaking goals that were unacceptable by our standards. So I think we just needed to take more pride in keeping clean sheets and... I think we've stuck together and we've kept a few clean sheets, but we want to keep a lot more going forward. Absolutely. And of course, you know, the Leicester game and Durham today, respectively, really, really tough appoint appointments. They made it really difficult for Everton. Do you think those results are super satisfying as well when you do have to fight it out to the very end? You know, there was, there's no easy games, are there? Yeah, I think keeping a clean sheet, you put yourself in a good, a good place to go and get a minimum point. Um, and we need to pick up as many points as we can, whether that be Conti Cup or in the league. So I think just keeping the clean sheet and sticking together no matter whoever has come in. We've had a lot of changes in the back line and we've been able to still pick up the, um, the clean sheet. So that's a credit to them and a credit to the players that have worked hard week in, week out. Definitely. It's fantastic to see. And of course, at the other end of the pitch, Tony Duggan, her first goal since returning to the club. She'll be made up, won't she, to have got that? Yeah, I wish I could have seen it, but I think I was on the floor. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm buzzing she's got off the mark. Um, I think she's been dying for that goal and hopefully she'll get plenty more for us. Definitely. And just finally, Gabby, as well, we've got two home games coming up as well. We saw another good crowd here at Walton Hall Park. How important are those fans in getting us to the, you know, getting those results? Yeah, I think the fans are amazing. We've got a drum now, I think. Yeah. every home game so I think they're great and they cheer us on and help us get that goal um, and I think getting them in a big crowd for the next two home games will be very important so we hope to get the Evertonians down Yes Gabby you know what to do 100% we want you all to be here West Ham and then Manchester United in the Conti Cup as well Gabby George thank you so much well in on your performance and your clean sheet thank up the Sophies <laughs> Yes, mate. Oh, she's left me hanging. <laughs> well, in girl. No, no.